Got just 4 to 6 GB of VRAM? You can still generate stunning AI art smoothly. In this video, we'll show you how to load and run the FlexDev model in GGUF format yeah, using Comfy baby. UI, no high-end <laughs> GPU required. It's fast, efficient, and perfect for low-spec setups. And if you haven't installed Comfy UI yet, don't worry. We've got a full step-by-step -step tutorial and video on our website you can check out before diving in. Let's get this up and running together. Let's get started. To get the FluxDev GUF model running smoothly in Comfy UI, you'll need to download a few essential files and place them in the correct folders on your PC. First, we'll head over to the official Hugging Face page, where you'll find a list of different GGUF model versions available. Now keep in mind, GGUF models come in different quantization levels, which affect how much VRAM they need. As a rule of thumb, the model's file size in gigabytes roughly matches the amount of VRAM required to run it smoothly. For example, the model we're using in this tutorial, flux one dev q 3 underscore k underscore s dot gguf is about 5.23 GB, which means you'll want at least 5 to 6 GB of VRAM for stable performance. So if you're working with limited VRAM, be sure to choose one of the lighter model versions. Next, right click on the model we'll be using and save it to the following directory, Comfy UI models diffusion underscore models. I've already downloaded it, so I won't be doing that again here. But as long as you've placed the file correctly, we're ready to move on to the next required download. Next, we'll download the encoder that matches our model. Since we're using the Q3 underscore K underscore SGUF model, make sure to pick the encoder with Q3 underscore K underscore S in its name to ensure they correspond correctly. Once you find the file, right click and save it to the following directory, Comfy UI models clip. After that's done, we can move on to downloading an additional encoder. Now we'll head over to the Hugging Face page to download a text encoder called clip underscore L dot Once you find it, right click to download it and save it to the following directory, Comfy UI Models Clip. Once that's in place, we're ready to move on to the final required file. Last but not least, we'll download a VAE file called AE.SafeTensors. Just like before, right click to download it and save it to the following directory, Comfy UI Models VA. Once all the necessary files are in place, here's a quick overview of the required models and the correct folder directories where they should be placed, just to make sure we're all in sync before moving on. Once everything's in the right spot, we'll be ready to launch Comfy UI next. Once all the required models and files are in their correct directories and Comfy UI is up and running, the next step is to load a custom workflow that makes it easy to run the FluxDev GGUF model. You can find the JSON workflow linked in the video description, as well as in our written article. After downloading it, simply drag and drop the file into Comfy UI's empty canvas. But hold up, we've got an error saying missing node types. It looks like two nodes are missing in our workflow, Unit Loader GGUF and Dual Clip Loader GGUF. No worries, let's fix this together. Next, head over to the Comfy UI Manager in the top right corner and click it. Then, click on Install Missing Custom Nodes. This will show the nodes we need to install. In our case, it's the Comfy UI GGUF node. Click Install, select the latest version, and then click Select to download the missing nodes. Once the download finishes, click the Restart button in the bottom left corner, then hit Confirm to reboot the server. You'll notice a reconnecting message in the top right corner. After that, a Confirm button will pop Pop up, click it to refresh the page. Once refreshed, the missing nodes will no longer have a red outline, meaning they're successfully installed and ready to go. We'll walk through each node in the order that makes the most sense for understanding how this powerful AI image generation pipeline works. Let's start from the foundation and build our way up to the final output. Let's start by laying the foundation of our workflow with the model loading nodes. These act as the core intelligence of our setup. First up is the UNet loader, responsible for loading the main Flux model, Flux 1 dev q 3 underscore k underscore s dot g g u f. Think of this as the artist's brain. It's the neural network that transforms noise into coherent images. The GGUF format ensures the model runs efficiently using less memory while still delivering high quality results. This node outputs the model connection, visualized by the purple line. 
Just below, we have the dual clip loader node, which loads two essential text encoders. The first is the T5 base GGUF encoder we downloaded earlier. This powerful model excels at interpreting detailed and nuanced prompts. The second is clip underscore L dot safe tensors, a standard clip encoder that complements the T5 model. Together, they give the Flux model strong language understanding capabilities. Make sure the type is set to Flux for correct compatibility. This node outputs the clip connection shown by the yellow lines, which will be connected to both the positive and negative prompt nodes in the workflow. Now we give our AI artist its creative direction through text prompts. Here's our positive prompt. Beautiful ninja warrior woman, wearing a sleek black silk dress with red accents, dual red katanas on her back, long dark hair flowing, striking a confident upper body pose, looking directly at the viewer. She stands in a misty neon lit alleyway, exuding sensuality and mystery, dressed in a Chinese inspired outfit with cinematic lighting and ultra detailed features. The clip encoders we loaded earlier convert this prompt into embeddings the AI can understand. This creates our positive conditioning, basically telling the AI, this is what I want you to create. The orange conditioning line carries this creative direction forward. Now here's something interesting about Flux. Notice how the negative prompt node appears empty or minimal. That's because Flux is fundamentally different from older models like Stable Diffusion. Flux is trained to follow positive instructions so well that it rarely needs negative prompts to avoid unwanted elements. The model is smart enough to understand what you want without explicitly being told what you don't want. This is one of Flux's major advantages, simpler prompting with better results. While the node remains for compatibility, it's mostly unused in Flux workflows. You can collapse this node to keep your workspace clean and focused. Next, we'll move on to the Flux Guidance node. This node controls how strongly our AI follows the text prompt through what's called prompt conditioning, essentially how much influence the text embeddings have on the image generation process. It's set to 7.5 by default, which strikes a great balance. It's strong enough to keep the AI focused on your prompt, but still allows some creative freedom. Higher values will push the AI to follow your prompt more rigidly, while lower values allow for more interpretive, creative outputs. The default of 7.5 offers a well-balanced middle ground, guiding the generation clearly without overly restricting the model's creativity. Next, let's set up the canvas, the digital space where our image will take shape. The empty SD3 latent image node generates the starting latent image, essentially a compressed blank canvas that the AI will work with. Here we've configured it to 1024 by 1024 pixels with a batch size of one, meaning we'll be generating a single image at a time. This node outputs a latent noise tensor, which serves as the foundation the model transforms into a visual result. The pink latent output output line represents this initial canvas data flowing into the rest of the workflow. Now we're at the K sampler node, the engine that will generate our latent image. Let's walk through the settings from top to bottom. We start with the seed. This random number determines the starting noise. If you want to recreate the same image later, just copy the seed or set control after generate to fixed. This keeps the seed constant across generations, which is useful if you wanna make small changes like hair or eye color while keeping the core composition. Steps is set to 20. This controls how many refinement passes the AI makes. More steps can improve detail, but also take more time. For most Flux workflows, 20 is a solid balance. Next is CFG scale, which we've set to 1.0. That might seem low, but it's intentional. Flux works best with low CFG values, especially since we're not using a negative prompt. Higher values would try to push the image harder toward the prompt, but with Flux, 1.0 gives more natural and artistic results. Our sampler is set to Euler, fast, clean, and reliable. The scheduler is set to beta. This one really shines. It produces noticeably better lighting, more dramatic depth, and a polished cinematic look. Finally, denoise is set to 1.0, meaning we're generating from complete noise, building the image from scratch using our prompt and model. Together, these settings guide the case sampler to take our model, conditioning inputs in latent canvas, and generate a detailed latent image, a compressed form that represents our final output. This still needs to be decoded by the VAE before we can actually see the result. Now, let's make our image visible. First, we load the VAE model we downloaded earlier. This is the AE.safe tensors file. Think of the VAE as a translator. Right now, our image exists in a compressed, abstract 
abstract format the AI understands, but we can't see it yet. Once loaded, the VAE decode node takes over. This is where that compressed data is transformed into actual visuals. Real, human-readable RGB pixels. It's at this stage the image truly comes to life. Finally, the Save Image node captures that finished artwork and saves it to your disk with the specified file name prefix. And just like that, your AI-generated image is ready to view, use, or share. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you found it helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe. That really means a lot to us and helps us keep making content like this. See you next time.